Hello everybody and today's uh, generosity roundtable is on how to prepare a budget. Now what is a budget? A budget is an intentional plan on how you're going to use your income for the coming month to achieve your goals. What a budget is not, it's not tracking what you spend until all your money is gone. See a budget is proactive which means you are uh, planning the month, well, how you're spending the money ahead of time. When you're tracking, you're tracking your spending, it's reactive. It is looking back and seeing where your money went. Now, tracking your spending is a very important aspect of budgeting, but it in itself is not budgeting. So in today's talk, there's kind of a, an agenda of what we're going to go through. First, we're going to go through the high level steps of what it's going to take to create and maintain a budget. Then we'll go over a few practical ways to be able to implement this um, plan to create and maintain budgets. And then I'll walk through creating a sample budget with you. So let's get started. So first, our high level steps. Step one, create a budget. <laughs> Seems pretty obvious. And high level, if you, first step to creating a budget is you write down your monthly income. Then second step is you list out your monthly expenses. Then third, you subtract your expenses from your income. And then you make adjustments until you see that your difference is zero. So the definition of a balanced budget is monthly income minus monthly expenses equals zero. And when we get into the example section, um, you'll have a, a little better understanding of what this means. So step two is you do track your spending. So like I mentioned at the beginning, that is an integral part of budgeting because this is how you maintain your budget. Um, how do you know how accurate your budget is unless you track what you spend and see how it compares to your budget? So throughout the month, you want to just track what you're spending and know what category um, that you're spending money in. Um, and then um, I say at the end of the month, compare what you spent with what you budgeted. But this is something you probably should just have awareness throughout the month so you don't overspend. Um, and then you can make... Um, spending adjustments as needed. And then step three, um, you should be reviewing your budget at least monthly. Uh, this is kind of related to, to step two. If you're tracking your spending, then you can review what you spent compared to your budget and then adjust where necessary. So um, at least once a month, you want to be looking at your budget and adjusting that budget for the coming month. So what are some practical ways that we can create your budget, maintain your budget, and document this information? Probably the simplest way is just pen and paper. Um, a lot of people just have a notebook or, or, um, or a journal or something where they are writing it all down. Um, there are, if you go to Amazon, some very specific budgeting journals out there that have forms and guides within the journal itself to help with this process if you uh, like pretty journals or enjoy using that particular method, but just a simple pen and paper work. Spreadsheets are good, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. Um, particularly you'll hear, hear a lot in the uh, Dave Ramsey world, the difference between uh, nerds and free spirits. Nerds like Excel and spreadsheets. Uh, my husband and I are both nerds, so this is how we document our budget, is using Excel. Um, but you can also use phone apps. Uh, two that I really like and really recommend is one is called Every Dollar. Um, and you can see the website here. That, that is a free app. Um, at least there's a free version of that app. There's also a paid version of every dollar, and the difference being the paid version will actually link with your bank account and download your expenses. But reality is, is, is you don't really need that. Um, the free version works just fine. You just have to manually enter um, some of your expenses. The other is, the, is called YNAB, which stands for You Need a Budget. Um, that is, um, does have a fee to it. Um, you can either pay monthly or if you pay up front for the year, it's $84 per year. Um, 
the idea is you want to pick something you're going to stick with based on your personality and based on your lifestyle. Uh, like I said, if you're a nerd, you might be going more to the Excel route. Uh, we like Excel because we can customize it to the way we we want to use it and what we want to track. Um, if you're more creative, you may be using a budgeting journal or um, um, if you're really creative, uh, look up something called a bullet journal. Uh, bullet journals are um, things where basically you have blank sheets of paper and you can sketch out and doodle and create your own um, kind of pretty methodologies of, of tracking budgets and whatnot. But either way, there's it's a matter of finding something that um, works for you. Now, this next step is tracking your spending. And the key is you need to find a way um, that you um, can track the date you made the, you, you spent that money, the amount of dollars that you spent, what category that that expenditure would come from, and then figuring out a way to determine how many dollars remain in that category. So what are some practical ways we can do that and track our spending? Well, what's nice and what I really like about every dollar and YNAB is it'll do both. It, you can have a, it will set up a budget for you and you can track your spending as well. So um, it's, a, it's a one package that will allow you to do both. Um, again, if you're using a notebook or a journal route, a lot of times uh, they have ways in order to be able to, to, be able to, to do that if you have a small notebook. You can, and when I say small, I say something that, you know, maybe you're, you can keep in a, in a, um, in your shirt pocket or in your purse. So that way, you know, maybe you go to the grocery store and you just spent $50 at the grocery store and you have a page that's labeled grocery, um, you know, and you put the date and I just spent $75 on groceries. So therefore I have, you know, $50 left in, in groceries to spend for the month. That it's that simple. It's just something where you can write down your expenses. Again, you can use a spreadsheet on your computer. You can use personal finance software, and I consider this a, a little bit different than the Every Dollar and YNAB. Um, it's almost like a electronic check register. We still like being able to reconcile and manually track what we're spending. Um, we use a, a, a very simple um, uh, software called Money Dance, which is similar to Quicken um, or, or Mint, um, and we manually enter, okay, we just spent this amount, and we can categorize it, and then it will sum things up for you. So it's just, I guess you could really say they're all personal finance software. Um, in our household, we use Money Dance to track our spending, and then we use a spreadsheet for our budget, and we meet once a month to be able to reconcile that. And then um, there's also a cash envelope or clip system. And I'm going to go to the next slide to kind of show what it looks like. Now, it's bas that's basically a cash system. So the envelope system is you can either use paper envelopes like you see here, or, um, and I guess I should backtrack, we use a combination of money dance for our electronic or debit cards expenditures and an envelope system. We do have a cash system. We actually use a, um, um, what do you call it, the, the coupon organizer, you know, that the plastic envelope that has sections in it, and each section is a different envelope. Um, and we use the cash system for things we know we are going to uh, potentially overspend on, that we really need that visual reminder of cash, of how much we have to spend and how much we have left. Now this picture of an envelope system is a little extreme. You're probably not gonna put cash out for your rent or your electric bill, but groceries is an excellent one for cash. Entertainment is a great one for cash. Um, you know, and dance lessons, if you, can, if you can pay the dance lessons in cash, that's probably gonna be a good one as well. But it's basically what you do is when, after your budget meeting, you determine which items um, that you want to use cash for, um, you cash out that amount and you put that amount in an envelope. So if you're budgeting $400 a month on groceries, you would put $400 cash in your grocery envelope. And basically the way you track is you're spending that money till it's gone. 
So at the end of the month, if there's no money left in that envelope, you've spent $400 in groceries. Um, if you have some money left, then, um, then you know, you kind of just do the difference and you know how much you've spent in groceries. Now the clip system is really, it's the same thing that, uh, this was a suggestion by uh, Rachel Cruz, who's Dave Ramsey's daughter, uh, for um, women who like to have a pretty, um, pretty, uh, I'm sorry, pretty wallets. Um, basically, and this is my clip system. Um, I kind of do both depending on what we're doing, but um, if I don't feel like carrying around my big, huge envelope of all my envelopes. Um, I have a clip and on the top there's a piece of duct tape which you can't see with a letter to which particular envelope that's in. So uh, like I have one that has G on the top and I'll pull out the grocery envelope money and put a clip on it and then I can put that clip in my wallet and I know what that cash is designated for, for when I go shopping. So it's just a different way of doing a cash system as a clip system. And again, this is a great way to um, be able to track your spending in categories where um, you uh, may be overspending or that you're going to a physical uh, brick and mortar store in order to buy those items. Um, and when we go through the example, we'll talk about this a little bit some more, a little bit more. Okay, so now here's where we are as far as creating a budget step by step. So let's go through this and let's see. So first let's write down our income and I'm going to write down $3,500. Um, now this is a net monthly income. Okay. So this is the money that either you have direct deposited into your uh, bank account, or if you still get a paper check, this is what you're going to get for that month. Uh, this is about equivalent, depending on your tax bracket and how much you have taken out. This is about $50,000 of gross income annually per year. Okay, so um, now next I'm going to write down and determine how much of that income do I want to give. And when I say give, I mean uh, taking out a percentage to give to your um, to local church to support your church and your church ministries. Um, or to give to, a, um, to your community in some way. And for this example, I am going to say that we're going to give $350, which is about 10% of our net income. And then next, you need to think how much do you want to save? And again, I'm going to say 10% um, of $350. So Right off the bat, we want to start with determining how much we want to give and how much we want to save. And then from that, we can calculate what we have left to spend for the month. So in this particular example, we have $2,800 left to spend for the month. And the reason we do it this way is because if you wait and spend the money first and then determine what you have left to give and save, you're not going to have anything left to give and save. So that's one reason. The second reason, particularly from a giving standpoint, this is a very biblical way of handling your finances. God through scripture talks about being able to give of your first fruits. So what does that mean? That basically means to prioritize giving over your spending. Okay, now this methodology, what you give and what you save is very, very personal. It is a heart decision. It's about, you know, really praying and deciding, you know, what at this stage and season in my life um, am I prompted to give and to save for whatever reason. This method is a good starting point, and they call this the 10 10 80 plan. Um, you may have heard that where you give 10%, you save 10%, and then you spend 80%. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail in this talk about saving and how to prioritize saving and what this saving, this saving amount is for. I highly recommend you go back um, in the, I think it was the April um, 
generosity roundtable that was recorded and can be found on the Journey Church YouTube page and also their Facebook page. I did one on saving and spending. Highly recommend going back to that. And it gives goes through on how to prioritize um, your saving um, and what you're saving for. So now we have $2,800 left to spend. So how do we determine what we spend it on? Well, the first step is you want to start with the four walls. Well, what are the four walls? I define the four walls as food, shelter, clothing, and transportation. This, these are the four necessities of life. Um, now, if you're a follower of Dave Ramsey, you will hear them say the necessities of life are food, shelter, utilities, and transportation. In my mind, utilities fall under shelter. So each of these categories, food, that's pretty obvious. What do you, you know, the, the necessities, this isn't going out to eat every day, but this is purchasing the groceries you need in order to feed your family and keep them healthy. Shelter is um, your home or your apartment or basically keeping yourself protected from the elements. So that would include utilities like uh, your gas for heat or electricity um, for, for, um, for heat and for, for cooling. Clothing, this is, the reason this is a necessity is because we can't run around naked. You know, this is also kind of a protection thing. We're protecting our body with clothing. So this category is not about budgeting enough money so you can buy a new pair of shoes every month. This is making sure that you have clothes on your body that are not falling apart, that are covering you, uh, keeping you modest, keeping you protected. Um, of course, we can go into a whole uh, rabbit trail on that. We're not going to. Uh, and then for this transportation, now, right now, with the pandemic, um, our, print, our transportation costs are probably lower, but we still need to maintain a car, um, pay for gas going to the grocery store. If you live in a major city, this would be the money that you use on your public transportation. Um, we still need to go places um, in order to purchase food um, or earn it, in some cases, to earn an income. Again, many of us are working from home right now, but as things start opening up, we will be tra um, transporting. <laughs> we will be traveling more. Um, so in this particular example, I set some uh, dollar amounts or some ideas of what this would look like. So groceries, I've set $400. Um, this is, uh, you could comfortably feed a family of four um, for about $400 a month. That's $100 a week about that you would be spending at the grocery store for food. Um, for shelter, I put mortgage or this could be rent at $750 per month. Then add an electric bill, phone bill, household items. So um, first let's talk a little bit about mortgage. So I chose $750 because actually it's a little bit less, but um, if we go back, our, our income that we wrote down was $3,500. A good rule of thumb is your mortgage or rent should be around 25% of your monthly income. This is actually a little bit less. $750 a month, I think, is around 20% of, um, or 21%, I think it works out to. We are very fortunate in the Roanoke Valley that we have a lot of very affordable, safe housing, that this is, this is definitely possible to find a place where you have a mortgage of about $750 per month. Um, you know, electric bill, um, right now, actually, we live in an all electric house. This is about on average what we're spending right now. It isn't quite so hot that we're running the air conditioning all the time. We don't have heat. So this is, uh, this is um, a real a budget amount for us, uh, for my husband and myself in our house um, to pay for electricity. And phone, um, I do consider phone a utility. Uh, this is something that can be very flexible. This is actually also a real budget amount. This is the amount that my husband and I have 
to budget for our two cell phones. So we have smartphones. Smartphones do cost more than a flip phone. So if you're trying to save money, that's one way you can save money is to get a very simple uh, flip phone or do one of those prepaid plans. But we need to be in contact with people. So I do consider our cell phones a necessity and part of our utilities in order to have that connection um, and not feel isolated. And I, I just considered it a utility and considered it part of our shelter. And then household items. We need to maintain our shelter. So what are household items? Well, the, you know, a lot of us, it's really up to you. I mean, household items could be your paper towels, your toilet paper, light bulbs, um, things of that nature. Um, in our house, what we have done is our grocery line item budget is whatever we buy at Kroger. Our household item budget is whatever we buy at um, Lowe's or we've actually been moving a little bit to Amazon to buy things like light bulbs and things of that nature. So we actually a lot of times will buy our paper towels and toilet paper at the grocery store. So we actually have a higher grocery budget to cover that. Again, it's just a matter of making making it simple in whatever you're going to use. So the grocery line item and the household items may become blended. But you, the whole point is you need to make sure you're allocating money for that. You may not spend that every month, um, but you do need to um, have some money that you're setting aside to maintain your home. Clothing. Um, if you have kiddos, you are going to be buying clothing on a more regular basis. This may need to be higher than $50 uh, a month. Um, I live in a household with two adults um, where one adult is really rough on his clothes. <laughs> so we do need to make sure that we have um, anywhere $50 to $100 a month in our clothing budget to replace clothes that wear out. Um, Transportation. Now, at one point in time, again, I'm, I'm letting you know these are real numbers from my budget. Um, we are not spending $300 per month on gas at the moment, um, but before the pandemic, uh, we were. So this is kind of what we have budgeted. Um, we set aside about $20 per month. I, I call it repairs and tires. You know, so this is for your oil change to main, again to maintain your car. Oil change to um, uh, on your car or uh, routine maintenance, but we also use it. Our cars are getting old. We've actually uh, bumped this up a little bit, but $20 for a fairly new car is very adequate. Um, this will build up over time. You're not gonna spend $20 every month, but then you know you have money set aside that if you do need to take your car in, that you can pay for it and not go in debt just to keep your car up and running. And same with these next two items, car insurance typically is not paid on a monthly basis, but you need to make sure you're setting money aside each month to pay your car insurance. And here in Virginia, we pay property tax on our vehicles. So you need to make sure on a monthly basis that you're setting money aside each month um, for your property taxes. Now, uh, that being said, we, we set money aside each month because we have a pretty large truck that has pretty high property taxes associated with it, as well as my car, and we have a trailer. So our property taxes are actually um, fairly high. Um, if you're a, a household that just has a single car, you may decide that you know when your property taxes come due, which is what, April, that that month you just say, OK, we need to make sure in our budget that we set two hundred dollars or whatever your bill is for property taxes to pay property taxes this month. You can do it either way. Um, since you are reviewing your budget on a monthly basis, um, you can always add or take away depending on what you know you're going to spend for that month. So um, but this is just some real numbers on the four walls of what to set aside. Um, so with this in mind, this um, uh, I wanted to kind of go through uh, what of these line items might make a good envelope or cash system. So I kind of marked with a little envelope things that you should cash out. Groceries are a great one. Household items, like I said, this is a brick and mortar store. You're probably buying these at Lowe's 
or Home Depot. Clothing, um, if you're, you know, going to the retail stores to buy your clothing, then this is a good envelope item. And repairs and tires, we actually don't use this to do repairs and tires as an envelope, but since this is something that you're not going to do every month, right? You're not going to be paying $20 a month for repairs, but it's something that you're accumulating over time in order to pay for the repairs on your vehicle. It can be an envelope. Um, and I imagine uh, that most facilities will accept cash um, that you can actually pay for your repairs um, or tires in cash. So this will give you a nice good visual indicator um, and a simple way to know how much money do you have set aside to uh, maintain your car. So just wanted to kind of show some ideas of how to use the envelope system here. When you add up all these expenses here, that is $1,980. So you still have $820 left to spend. So um, let's see what we do next after we've satisfied the four walls our income minus our expenses. It's not zero left yet. We still have $820 left. So let's see what we do next. So now we have $820 to spend. So what do we do? We list out any other expenses that we may have. Chances are we have more than the four walls. So what other expenses could we have? We may have some debt payments like credit card or car payments. That may be part of our expenses. We may have medical expenses, um, co-pays or prescriptions that aren't covered by insurance or um, have, you know, basically that are, or a flexible spending account or house savings account. So it's coming out of our, our income. You may have childcare. Um, yes, cable TV and internet, I do not consider a necessity. Um, you know, Internet right now that we're working from home, okay, you may be you may want to lump that in with your utilities and maybe a necessity, but uh, cable TV is not. Um, hair salon or barber shop, I think we learned over the past um, couple of months that um, we can live without getting a haircut. Although I will have to admit, I was very grateful to get my haircut um, after an extended time of not getting a cut, but that's a total rabbit trail. If you have a pet, setting money aside to pay for that pet's food and vet bills, uh, maybe part of your expenses, gifts. Again, this is something that you're not gonna do every month, but you should be setting money aside every month um, in order to pay for birthday gifts, um, you need to start in January to start saving up money to pay for whatever gifts you're buying your children or anybody at Christmas time. Um, so if you're saving money throughout the year to purchase gifts for all these occasions, then it'll prevent the stress of, of going into debt to buy Christmas gifts at Christmas time, which many people do. Many people will use credit cards um, to buy gifts at the end of the year, and then they struggle to pay that off in January. And then entertainment. So um, we are starting to open back up. So this would be going out to eat, going to the movies, um, going to a concert, um, whatever um, type of entertainment that you may have, setting money aside for things like that. So in this particular example, what is this going to look like? We'll just put some money together. I actually am not going to um, have an expense item for debt um, in this example. Next month, I am going to do a roundtable on debt, and we'll kind of take this this budget that we're building here, and we will um, we will add debt expenses and talk about how to get out of debt and what that looks like. But I just threw some typical examples, maybe. Um, you have, and I called it supplements. So maybe you're spending $50 a month on vitamins and nutritional supplements to help keep your uh, family healthy. And then an additional $30 a month in co-pays for certain prescriptions that you have on a regular basis. Um, cable TV, um, 
hundred dollars is actually pretty low. That's why you know cable TV a lot of times is one of the first things you you might want to cut in order to help save more money or um, to help um, be able to um, pay off debts um, because it can get pretty expensive and there's a lot of other alternatives out there. So setting $60 aside to go to the hair salon or barber shop, um, pet $100 a month. Um, we have a very small 11 pound dog and food and medicine and vet fills because he is on some, um, some meds that it's about $100 a month even for our little guy. So um, something to keep in mind if you're considering adding to your family a, a pet of some kind that it can add up. Uh, gifts, uh, we have a small family, so $50 a month for gifts setting aside is plenty for us in order to make sure we have money for birthday and Christmas gifts for everyone. Yours might be a little bit higher depending on your uh, gift needs. Entertainment, this is very modest at $200 per month. Um, if you think about it, this is, um, our biggest entertainment, believe it or not, is eating out. Um, we don't eat out very much, uh, but when we do, we like to go someplace fun um, and um, have have that experience. Um, but this would be, what, about $50 a week um, if you decided to go out once a week. And then blow. So this is something I did not list previously, but I wanted to explain blow. Um, you may want to call this miscellaneous. It's very important when you, particularly when you do your budget, well, I shouldn't say that. We still have blow in our budget. And what that is, is that's kind of the other category. Like I said, inevitably there's gonna be something little that you need to get um, that is not listed in any other uh, category above. Now we use blow that this is actually a cash envelope for us so what do we use it for blow for us would be um uh, you know if we need to buy stamps um we still send some things out um by mail <laughs> some of our bills we still do by mail and we still send um, we have cards that we send every once in a while so we still use stamps maybe you're not using stamps but we do still use stamps um we don't need that every month but every once in a while, we need to buy stamps and it'll come out of blow. Um, if we, um, you know, I'm just trying to think of some ideas. Actually, a, a lot of times when we go to the Goodwill and we go to the stuffed toy section and we buy um, stuffed toys for our dog for to, to, as a toy for our dog, because our dog likes to rip them apart. Um, he shreds them. Anyway. Um, so, you know, we'll use that to buy some toys for our dog, to entertain our dog and maintain the pet budget more for his necessities and not for his, uh, his toys. <laughs> um, you know, so things like that, things that just kind of pop up, you never know. Um, you know, you may decide it gets to the end of the month. Hey, we still have blow money. We didn't need anything else. This may be, you know, a little dinner out. So that way you have it, but it's good to have that little cushion. Uh, and this is small, like I said, it's only $50, but um, for those miscellaneous items, if you find you re that really does not happen, that you have everything else allocated, you can eliminate that category. Particularly in the beginning though, if it's your very first budget, it's good to have a blow item. And you may even want to have that blow line item a little higher, around $100 for something you may forget. Oh, I didn't realize that we go to, um, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't that you go to this particular store and, you know, maybe it's for a hobby or something and you realize that you're spending using that on hobby items. But either way, um, have a blow item for those unforeseen items in your budget. Bottom line. So what does this add up to? Believe it or not, this total six hundred and forty dollars. So we still have one hundred and eighty dollars left to spend. So we still don't have that balanced budget. So now what do we do? Well, now we have some decisions. Maybe we increase our entertainment money and we put all that in entertainment. 
Maybe we have a specific project that we are saving for and we decide above that $350 to save, we want to save more for a particular purpose. Maybe you want to um, save up for a special vacation and you start using that $180 to uh, save up for a vacation item. So you can see that the, you, the idea is you want that left to spend to equal zero. So you want to make sure that you're spending everything out. And you can see on this simple modest income that you can have a pretty full and pretty um, budget uh, and a pretty full life with um, being able to have some fun with entertainment, saving for gifts, um, and really have a stress-free life because you have have a plan to be able to handle all the expenses in your life. So that is kind of how uh, you would create a budget. Now, I know this was a lot of information. Um, there are some resources for you. If you go to journeyconnection.com, there is a place that has some budget forms. So there's an Excel form. If you're a nerd and want to have an Excel form that you use, uh, that you want to use, there is also a, a PDF of a very simplified form if you'd rather use pen and paper. And then there's also a um, page that kind of lists out the steps of how I walked through building that budget if you want to build your own budget. If you have any questions, um, you go to the Journey Church Facebook page and you can ask questions there. Um, I think actually there's even a place on our website that you can ask questions. If you need help, if you want help in trying to figure out how to establish your first budget, go to the Journey Connection page. Um, there's a place for uh, requests or um, to contact us and contact Journey Church and I will um, and they will get in touch with me and we can sit down and have a confidential session. So it's very confidential where I can help you build your first budget if you need help building your first budget. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it helps you be able to take control of your finances and be able to um, help you achieve your goals and achieve your dreams. And I just wish everybody a blessed day. Thank you.